family we are back hey make sure you all like the video and i want to thank y'all for being here everything we talk about is alleged everything we talk about is um for fair use commentary purposes and stuff like that and we all learn stuff here so it's for educational purposes anyway <laughs> let me know where you're tapping in from y'all and thanks for being here once again um there is a video and it's titled tia kemp outs rick ross and diddy's fo nights listen y'all oh my goodness i've always thought things about these two because of how they would be with each other it was weird it was different and it was just too friendly to be grown men point blank period but yeah do y'all remember when diddy brought the golf cart or something anyway let's get to it and if you keep oop tia kemp alleges that rick ross is on diddy's fo tapes go over there and give diddy a hug go ride the bike with him now she be going in it's something i like about her she reminds me of uh young boy's mother on everything i love i love young boy's mother and i feel like you put her up for a reason for real for real but let's keep going keep sending messages around that's getting back to me i'm gonna come over here and tell it all you be told your to be towing next you know what i'm talking about oh Chill. rick ross's baby mama tia kemp just came for him all over again after she exposed him for being a very regular participant in diddy's freak off parties she even went as far as claiming rick is scared that he might be exposed because diddy has several tapes of him at these freak offs she also alluded to rick sleeping with men by calling him the f slur and claiming that she plans to tell all his kids about the things he's been getting down to with Diddy. What makes this even messier is that there were already rumors about Rick being involved in Diddy's dirty dealings after several lyrics of his old songs resurfaced, mm. where he blatantly admitted to SA and seemingly painted Diddy out to be his role model. As if that- Your boy say, slipped something in her drink. She ain't even know it. <laughs> we do now wasn't already disturbing enough, one of Diddy's freak off victims recently confessed everything that Diddy put him through and he name dropped Rick Ross as one of the people that he slept with at Diddy's freak off parties. New York City, they say it's sold out. They yeah. told me this is sold out. I call daddy, yeah. he said, Kevin, yeah. where you at? Yeah. And when I'm where in Miami, Miami, and I, Miami, I need anything. <laughs> and I mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> We can't even discuss it. The things that this man is capable of bringing to you, but believe me, call daddy. He yeah. said, Kevin, yeah. where you at? Yeah. And when I'm Reach in Miami, in Miami, and I, and Miami, I need anything, <laughs> and I mean anything. <laughs> we can't even discuss it. The things that this man is capable of bringing to you, but believe me, he has Miami on lock. What is the love of this? Hey, y'all. Free between the lines, point blank period, anything. Now, as most of y'all already know, Tia has been on a mission to make Rick's life a living hell ever since they separated. She has her foot on his neck and has for years now, and it don't look like she plan on slowing down anytime soon. Just a few months ago, she was dragging him for allowing his then girlfriend, Christina, to talk crazy to her, even though she's the one who was with him for the longest time and literally is the mother of his child. As if that wasn't already crazy enough, Tia recently came for Rick again when she inserted herself into his beef with Drake and exposed him for trash talking Drake the whole time they were together. Mm. According to Tia, Rick is borderline obsessed and jealous of everything that Drake has achieved and he used to spend every night ranting to her about Drake, Drake and how he doesn't deserve to have the stuff. Again. His eyes are so far apart, bro. That dude look, oh, looks like a baby dragon. Jesus. Why your driver stand in your mama house that you grew up in and rolling oats? And I heard it's a tribe but house. I'm oh. Say Rick Ross a billionaire. Yeah, he ain't no billionaire. He over-exaggerated everything. Y'all better stop believing that. He threw brown. 
And Drake, I want you to call me because I got something to tell you personally. He talk about your family, but any racist too. He talk about Drake. Oh. Wait, 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 stop. Don't skip this video because. Oh, call me Drake face ass. <laughs> Let's go. Girl, he got a baby from a Russian woman, look just like Drake. Beautiful little boy. Same age, one of that girl got them three churn from baby. Mm. Them churn the same age. That's why she be hiding in the in the hole somewhere every now and then. Cause she know he got a baby that her well, baby. When Rick Ross tell you Drake on um, Drake business allegedly. Cause he pillow talk with me every all through the night when he wants sandwiches and wake up. His sleep pattern off. But it looks uh. like Tia is not letting off of Rick Ross's neck anytime soon because she just exposed him for sleeping with several experts at Diddy's parties, including men. Mm. See, Rick Ross and Diddy have been very good friends for over 20 years and have worked together on a lot of business ventures. In fact, during a 2009 interview with MTV, Rick talked about how inspired he was by everything Diddy had accomplished and that he's proud to be counted among few very close friends in Diddy's circle. He said, The experience and knowledge that Diddy possesses is priceless. The relationships that he's accumulated over the last 20 years is priceless for a young artist such as myself. Although relationships don't mean shit now, nothing, straight manure. We developed a mutual friendship. We just stayed in contact. I was calling him for advice anyway, and he was doing it for free. What oh, you think about that, was. homie? Help me I get this, he homie. He was doing free. so many different things for me on that level. But as I bet he was doing a whole bunch of different things for free on you on a whole bunch of levels. Most of y'all already know by now, it's impossible to be this close to Diddy without being sucked into his dark world of freak offs. Pause. And that's exactly what happened with Rick. Shortly after Cassie's explosion, $30 million SA lawsuit against Diddy, people start. Hey, she guilty too, though. Cassie should be held accountable too. Okay, she can get her little money, but she need to be held accountable too because she was a part of those things. She misled some people too, allegedly, in my opinion. I love you, Poppy. What's better than sending a woman to get a woman and you just sit back and enjoy? women think about it i had a friend from baton rouge we went out she was into women i never forced nothing and that was my baby too Ooh, we spoiling listen listen she told me straight up we can do that i'm like look i ain't even pressed it's too much you know what i mean floating around it you know what I mean? But when we went out, she would reel him in without trying. It was a perfect situation. Now, I say that to say this. Imagine the money, notoriety. Yeah. Then you go, you think you're getting a record deal just like Cassie thought she was getting a deal. And these hoes will go for anything started doing some, some digging of these into the people that Diddy had been close <laughs> pals with for years, trying to see if anybody else had also been participating in this mess. And as you can already imagine, boy did they find some dirt on Rick. The first was his 2009 song, Magnificent, where he blatantly rapped about witnessing Diddy essaying the members of a girl group that was signed to his record label at the time called Total. Rick rapped, I made a transition from the thieves to the biggest executor Def Jam's ever seen. The game Game never changed, money's still a focal, but it's time to essay the game like Puffy did total. Mm, so, mm, this man mm. was. Mm, mm, mm. I bet you Diddy was like, yeah, take that, take that. I like that, daddy. I like it when you rap like that, daddy. Face ass. He took a shot at a group of women, y'all. Come on, bruh. Big back, bitter face. Big back, bitter face, bare body ass. Look at that little circle around his mouth. That looks so, yeah. Get it cut in a square. That's just, that's not it right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I've been vaping, quote unquote really out here using SA as a reference to him taking over the rap game. You really just cannot make this up. Some people argued that Rick meant Diddy was financially SAing total since he is known from stealing from his artists and leaving. 
Here, let me show you guys something real quick. Real quick. Oh, it's in my, it's, I think it's in my um, other video. Hold on real quick. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to show y'all something. Make sure y'all go check out my uh last video, not uh industry sellout. Go check it out, you guys. Anyway, check this out. Hold on, how much money? I don't have premium on my own video. Nice. <laughs> All right, check this out. Hold on, Jesus. Jeez, my bad, y'all. All right, hold on. Watch this. My camera. Ah, uh, it was something with Snoop and Dre. Listen, Snoop, Dre, they um, I think Dre is gonna be next. He admitted on camera that somebody took Dre's video of him and Snoop Dogg. Yes, y'all. Him and Snoop Dogg. My uh, big cousin sent me the link. I cannot find it. Oh, here it is. Hold on, hold on. Hold you on. think Diddy is the only one turning out his artists? Then you are listen, sorely listen. mistaken. Puff Daddy is just one out of many. This includes Dr. Dre listen, and Birdman. So listen. the first thing we need to talk about is the Dr. Dre tape. For my private collection, you know what I mean? Snoop was a part of it. Somebody, <laughs> somebody stole this tape from my house. It's a lot of X-rated things on it. This is like the, the, the Tommy. Need I say less? Let's continue leaving them with crumbs. However, other people felt like this was a double entendre and that Rick meant Diddy physically essayed the group members, which is also something he's very much capable of doing. Either way, people were not having it and they dragged him for Phil, like this person who said, with all this Diddy stuff going on, I'm surprised nobody pulled that Rick Ross bar from Magnificent, where he said, but it's time to essay the game like Puffy did total. Another Ooh. person said, I need to know what Rick Ross meant when he said it's time to R the game like Puffy did total. But see, this wasn't the last of it because 50 Cent also brought to our attention another predatory lyric from Rick. Here we go. I bet y'all this shit. Slipped it in her drink and she ain't even know it. Oh my God. Heck, on his song, UOE. Thank you. And it ain't no UOE or whatever. You know, you know on this know. song, all in her champagne she ain't even know it i took her home and enjoyed that she <laughs> there y'all go right there what more is it to say they got so bold they put it in songs y'all and this was earlier in his career i want to say because he remixed that um future track so yeah there you go oh yeah Ain't even know it. 50 Cent posted multiple photos of Diddy and Rick Ross, as well as a screenshot of the lyrics on his IG page. And he captioned it, what the F? At some point, you just gotta do the right thing. And do y'all remember the time 50 Cent posted this photo of Diddy and Rick Ross seemingly about Ooh. to kiss each other on the lips during the They were on stage, you guys, and they were walking past each other. Only went on IG <coughs> Live and confirmed that all the rumors about Rick and Diddy are true. She said, Rick Ross is running over to Miami to let low for a while because he's scared he might be next in the investigation after Diddy. According to Tia, Diddy has multiple tapes of Rick getting freaky at these parties and he plans to turn everything over to the feds at the right time. You big my Will, I want you to talk. Talk. I love you. Don't be scared now. Huh. No Diddy, huh? You scared now, huh? I know y'all <laughs> on them tapes. Freaky <laughs> I know he is. Ten churn <laughs> It's time to show them churns now. I ain't gonna let off the yet. Churn. <laughs> oh my God. You should have been I'm shut sorry. this big mouth. You know it. You know it. Sit me a fruit. I'm mad right now. <laughs> ain't hit me and my baby prom in two weeks. I'm gonna go let off. Turn that <laughs> down, man. Turn it down. <laughs> it's quiet right now. <laughs> what you quiet? Nobody want to see your Louis outfits and sneakers. <laughs> Nobody want to see it. Nobody don't care to see the Jets no more. You running out of 
is not. Go Ooh. over there and get Diddy a Go ride the bike with him, you fat mm. You know what time it is, Prompt. You gonna make me come to the gate, fat You been in Miami a lot, cause Ooh. you ain't got no motions. It's slowing down. She said you've been in Miami a lot. You ain't got no motion. It's slowing down. Mm. I heard. I heard you fat. I'ma get you, Will. I'ma get your. Mm. I'ma get universe. Do your work on that big, Ooh. big back. <laughs> and if you keep. Oh my God! Did she use the big back, y'all? Oh my God! She used the big bag. <laughs> Sending messages round that's getting back to me. I'm going to come over here and tell it all. As if Tia's revelation wasn't already disturbing enough, a video recently started going viral of the uh -oh. man who shot up the Trump National Hotel. You want your Instagram notification to look like this when it. Take this time to like the video, y'all. All right. Revealing some disturbing information about Rick Ross, he claims he was one of Diddy's freak off. Freak. It's interesting. He's wearing that shirt. And he always has people doing stuff to him for him on camera. Do y'all peep this shit? One video, he had two Chinese ladies rubbing on him, massaging his shoulders and back and doing his feet. Now he got some dude all on his hair. Imagine when. It's at freak off time. Fuck it, I'm gonna say it. Shit. Freak off time. Freak off, freak off, freak off time. Let me st stop filtering myself so damn much. Let's get it. Victims and that Rick Ross, Big Sean, and DJ Khaled were some of the people who would come through to have at him. He said he even caught some STDs at some point, but oh. they were still sleeping with him. Combs. Okay. Eight. Two. Four. Diddy. Okay, it's not good. He drinks all the time. With Diddy these past couple of years. <laughs> hey y'all, the, the, it's it's right here. It's all for jokes and laughs and gags and you know it's pure satire. This video is just comedy. It's all alleged, just speculations and allegations. Nothing set in stone. None of what we're talking about is true. It's just stuff that's in the universe. Anyway, pay attention, y'all. Real talk. This next video, um, Mark Curry, American rapper known for his 2001 single, Bad Boy for Life. Now, that's all this dude did with this label. Point blank, period. Dude's Wikipedia is shorter than Webster. Listen, he, mm, y'all know what's going on with Diddy. Your boy went in. I'm about to include this video. And in the comments, let me know what y'all think about it. Point blank, period. Executives, he, that's, you know, that's just his, was his, I guess that's what the whole name bad boy comes from. That people don't really understand. What is it? What is a bad boy? What makes, why did he choose that name? You know, now if I die, blame Diddy. Former Bad Boy Records artist Mark Curry breaks his silence on Diddy. Now, there's a lot of skeletons in Diddy's cupboard, and Mark is ready to name every one of them. Yeah, they released Shine, right? And then they deported him to Belize, said he couldn't come back to the United States. So he goes back to Belize. And do you remember when Def Jam signed them to a record deal? They gave him what, $8 million? million dollars. How much? L.A. Reid gave him a million dollars. All right, so L.A. Reid gave him a million dollars to put out an album, and the album never came out. I knew that when L.A. Reid went to give him that million dollars, that that was Puff giving him the money, but he had to give it through L.A. Reid. They never so intended, they never intended on giving him an album. If they would have gave him a million dollars for an album, wouldn't we have heard an album? Okay, so what you're saying is this is Puffy's way of paying Shine off for taking the rap for him. You're very smart. That was one. Yeah, uh, Shine came home. He was horrible. Horrible. I mean, 
he, his voice didn't sound the same. His lyrics wasn't the same. It, it was like everybody was so hyped for Shine to come home. And we had been talking about Shine coming home. Oh, when Shine gets home, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because he just did this bid. It was like he was this, you know what I'm saying? You know, real gangster dude. Now he's going to come home and he's just going to kill shit. And he came home. Voice wasn't the same. Lyrics wasn't the same. That was just a way to get him some money, you know, for, for what he had to do. And they deported him. Damn. So you be like, damn, you got deported and you ain't got no money. You know, one, I want y'all to know this. These stories are strictly for when I was young and I didn't know no better. But now that I'm a grown man, my, my, my whole life has changed, man. I'm a different kind of individual. But yeah, um, one time, a couple of times. Or even the dancers, like he had the back, the dancers used to come do the tryouts. They'd be showing up to the tryout room and all of this. I'm like, yeah, I'm going there. So I'd be like, ooh, look at her, look at her. That's the one right there. So I go get the baddest ones. Cause plus all, it, the, all of the females naturally like me. I don't know what it was, but I, I knew they naturally liked me. And I, and I felt it cause I like me like that too. Right. So he like Mark. Uh, where you get this girl from? I said, I got her from the club. He said, um, she kind of bad. He said, uh, if you give your girl to me, I'll give you one of my girls. I said, Puff, I can't give you no girl. I said, but if I walk away and she like you, then, 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 then that's what it is. But I walk away and go to the store and leave her in the, in the studio. I come back and she booed up with you and y'all together. I'm going to be like, hey, okay. I ain't going to have nothing to do with it. So... I come back, the girl mad. She said, why you leave me here with this creep? I said, where's Puff Daddy? Who else? I couldn't even leave you with someone better. I thought you would be happy. She was like, nah, I'm not happy. I don't like this dude. So then she was like, well, I told him I ain't like him, but I got a twin sister. He, but, but I told him she won't like him either. That's when he really got mad. I had to get that girl up out of there quick because I realized he was going to try to hit my girl or be violent towards my girl because my girl didn't like him. I, all of the pretty females I know in the world, man, they don't like you for no money, man. They like you for your heart, especially if she's a female of substance. You know, that's just my opinion. Now, a lot of people lost their lives dealing with Diddy. Now, some died in mysterious circumstances, too. It took a long time for that autopsy to come out. I think there's more people around Puff that lost their lives than the people who were signed to that label with the Migos in them. There was a lot of lives lost on that label. But I think Bad Boy got took the record. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party. And then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms, and you fuck around and look in the wrong room. Nick, come here. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. Now, Shine was believed to have gone to prison for Diddy. He thought he was a friend, but to Diddy, he was just another artist on his label. And Mark laid out the details of the shooting. The night at the club? Yep. Uh, well, as a dude, do some money at Puff, kind of insulted him. Shine being the person who, who hangs around Puff that feels like, you know, um, out of respect to my brother, or sometimes you could think Puff is like a brother. You can, it's easy to mistake Puff as a friend, for real, until you need him. Then when you need him, you're gonna realize he's not the, he's not the same person that you thought he was, right? So you could be in the club with him and somebody could be like, yo, F Puff. And you be like, what? This nigga said what? Then you pull out the gun and want to start shooting or whatever it may be as what Shine did. And the next thing you know, you're in trouble. You must have thought that this dude was your friend or somebody that cares about you. He don't care about you. He's not your friend. He going he gonna to say, and I believe in this interview, he said that they was asking him, was Shine like a brother or 
uh, someone that uh, was like, someone he cared, he was like, he was just an artist. He's capable, like I told you, I want you to understand this deep. I mean, and I'm, I, I say something for, you know, make things clear. Me is the walk that I live. The only person on the face of this planet that I ever could have that kind of altercation with to where if something ever was to happen to me, man, look at him. It ain't no, it ain't, it ain't nothing great happen to me by accident. I'm not ready to go trip and bump my nose on a, on a, on a wall. I'm not going to have no pneumonia or nothing like that. You understand? And if anything ever, you ever see anything happen like that with me, you already know, but it won't always happen. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how that is, man. That's what, what makes me feel confident to do the things that I do. I that and I reflect and I'm like, man, I do remember seeing him be or putting, being physically violent towards females. I seen him be physically violent towards um, producers, uh, other record execs, you know, um, this, the, even artists. Always those kind of stories, man. But you know, those stories are seen from the inside out, not from the outside in. So it's just like, Sometimes you can tell, you know, as a man, you'd be like, look, we're going to need a fair one or, or we're going to, we're going to, we are one on one, a fair one on one. And we fight as men so we can come to a resolution. We can, we can come to a resolution, right? So sometimes we fight as men, but you know, you, you, you see that sometimes they fight, they don't, they, they keep fighting. They fighting with women. They fighting with people. They fighting with love. They fighting with they self. I seen him fight with his own self. And when they get addicted to pills, you know, some, you know that it alters the ego. All of that kind of stuff, the vices. I seen it all, man. You know? And you said that you seen him get physical with his own orders? Meaning like um, producers, more, mainly the hitmen. Maybe mainly his, 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 his the, the, the producers. Um, and what I mean by physical, it'd be like, sometimes it might be a physical fight between him and someone else. And you say, you know, wow, you're fighting even with your own artists. You're fighting when you go home. You're fighting with people in your office. You're fighting with your girlfriend. You're fighting with me. You just want to fight everybody, don't you? And that's how some, that's what, when you think of that name, it, that might be what he defines bad boy. It's, 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 it's really about that energy that he feels like what makes him. That's, that's what makes him. He's very, I always seen violence in him, man. Not only would you, so we can say females, yes. I seen him violent with women. I seen him violent with dudes. You don't think if he hit a man with a chair for take or dating this girl, you know, I, they gonna have a fight at home too. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, they say uh, he 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 busts her nose up on the on the boat. And have you ever been to Sandro Pace here, brother? Play a mandole. Remember that was in his song. I need a good woman next to me. So then it happened to San. What was it, Sandro? Pay? Like that, 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 that island. And then he bust her nose. They had a shit. They say, say she said they tried to make it seem like she slipped and fell. She slipped and fell and broke her, uh, broke her nose. Nah, I, the truth was she slipped and fell and landed on his fist. Yeah, but that's what happens when you put your hands on females. It's, I don't really have much respect for a man who who's um, physically abusive towards women, man. I, I kind of think they'd be kind of suspect. I'd be like, man. You I don't think Mark had seen enough then. Looks like the straw that broke the camel's back was Diddy doing the same to Mark's girlfriend. Hi. You go into his office. You say, Puff, I'm here to talk to you about the money for my recording deal. Where's the money? He say, oh, the money's there, but I just need you to make one more song so we can start promoting and marketing. And you be like, okay, well, only thing I need is one more song. Only thing you need, Playboy, is one more song. He just sent me out trying to um, look for the impossible. So then you go back, you be like, man, hold up, man. I don't, I don't really believe in that one more song thing. I don't really believe in that. Let's, let's think of something else. 
another way we can do business. That one more song thing, man. I keep chasing that one more song. I've been chasing that one more song for so long. That song don't exist. So that's what it's like doing business with somebody. It's like the master of evasion. Somebody who's, who's, who can evade any question you ask him. But when he first got signed, and um, one of the first things he wanted when he got signed was a Mercedes Benz. So we go to the Mercedes Benz dealership, and then he wanted a 600, and they was out of 600s. So he told them to give him the 500, take the numbers off and put the 600 on there. And I realized he couldn't drive. And then the next day I got a call and said for me to come down to the hospital and they need, need me to identify some people. And I get there and the whole emergency room is full of Shine, his cousins, his friends and everything. And Shine is over in this room. The doctor told me not to tell Shine that his cousin died in the, in the car accident. The axle of the Mercedes Benz had came out. His cousin was in the back seat and the axle came out in, uh, of the back seat on the impact and went straight through his cousin's chest. And um, I was there for him through that because he lived with me in the house. So the police knew to come to the house and they was like, do I know Shine? And I told them, yes, they said, we need you to come to the hospital. I know him deep like that, deep enough to where, you know, it was a time I think Shine was, he had a gun in the house and the bullet was jammed in the gun. And he was just so infatuated with guns and Hetzels and, and Glocks and every rap that he was singing was like, when I gripped the Glock and when I, you'd be like, damn, you got, you got a lot of raps about guns. Like your raps are kind of violent and you know what I'm saying? But that's what he felt he wanted to come out with bad boy. So he went around, he had the, the gun, the bullet jam. And I tell him, he's like, can you get the, can you unjam the gun? I say, I grab the gun and unjam it. And I say, Shine, if you don't know how to unjam this gun, you probably don't need to be having it, right? And I knew his grandmother that used to come by the house and check up on him all the time. I used to have to tell her that, you know what, as long as he around me, I'm gonna make sure I'm taking care of him. I'm gonna make sure he's doing the right things. And, and that was the kind of relationship me and Shine had. Today, it's not like that. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't hear anything from him. Um, not that I'm expecting to, you know, but would be nice for, for him to say, what up, Curry? I ain't got no problem with you. Don't be mad at me just because I, I me and Puff got an issue. Like, damn, people got mad at me. They was like, damn, Curry, I, I can't be your friend because I'm Puff friend still. You be like, damn, don't get mad at me and don't want to be my friend just because you his friend. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Looks like new evidence points that Diddy took out Porter to prevent her from talking to the feds, too. He was about Suge, and he went up there for a guns or location with Suge. No, it didn't happen like that. I know about this personally, bro, because I spoke to the person that Suge people and Suge them had trapped in the restaurant. It was D-Rock, right? And this is why D-Rock holds his allegiance to Puff like he do now. Cassie was with Puff. When D-Rock called and said, yo, my man, I'm naked. I don't have no guns, no nothing. These niggas is up, got me trapped up in this um, restaurant. He put the guns in Cassie purse had her go into the restaurant and see D-Rock and gave it to D-Rock so D-Rock could get out of there. So when Cassie said that uh, he had uh, her go to a restaurant because Shugnam had was up in there, it wasn't because Shugnam was up there, it was because D-Rock was up in there and they was beefing with D-Rock up in the restaurant. So Cassie had to go up in there with the guns, me and D-Rock had that conversation I you, because I was trying to have a conversation with him about Big again and what was the situation and what had went down with Big. But he never met with me after that. But he had told me that story why he had to roll and rock with Puff now because Puff saved him by using Cassie. Wow, so that's really what it was. That makes sense though, that makes sense. So when she said that Shugnam was up in the restaurant and everything like that, 
She wasn't going to do nothing. What Puff looked like going up in the restaurant to having a shootout with Suge them? It wasn't because of that. It was because D-Rock was trapped in there with no guns or nothing. That's why she had to go up in there. She had the guns in her purse and had to go up in the restaurant. What's up, y'all? Hey, that's Mark Curry. He he got a short little career with Bad Boy, but he's talking some heavy stuff. And with everything that's going around, I got to say, I kind of believe him. What do y'all think? He was right there, point blank, period. He know, Listen, I don't know. I hope we learned something. Quit taking things for face value. Look deeper, but don't look too deep. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this educational quest. I enjoy learning new things with you all. I'm out. Peace.